Good morning, guys. So I was headed out to feed the chickens, but it is raining again. This has been a week of weather. We started out with just cold weather, and then yesterday we had super windy weather. It was like 50 mile an hour gusts. Everything's fine, so that's good. But today and for the rest of the week through the weekend, it's pretty much, you know, very high percentage of rain every day, which means it's going to be raining. Saturday is like 100%, probably an inch of rain that day. The unfortunate part of that is I haven't been able to do anything on the cottage because I didn't want to do any stucco or painting when it's either just rained or going to be raining the next day. I don't know if that's even a thing, but to me that seemed like something you shouldn't do. I did get all my roses planted, and so on Next Level Gardening on uh, Friday, well, you'll be seeing this after that. So yesterday on Next Level Gardening, um, I planted all of our bare root roses from David Austin, and I planted the climbing roses that are potted that I got on clearance right there, um, up each of the posts of the run, some climbing roses I got on clearance at Lowe's. So anyway, I'm going to wait just a few minutes. Um, I'll feed myself before I feed the chickens. And hopefully by that time, we'll have a break in the rain and I can get back out there. So today I'm actually taking a break from steak and eggs. And I'm just going to have good old bacon and eggs. The reason being is um, I am running out of bacon fat and I cook my steak in the bacon fat. And I wanted to share with you guys a life changing way of making bacon. Now I know ba making bacon seems like the simplest thing in the world, right? You throw it in the pan and cook it till it's done. Or if you grew up in the 80s, and back in the 80s we got our microwave, and then they had these big microwave plastic dishes that drained the bacon out, and uh, or you put paper towels down, but you'd lose a lot of the fat, and they just didn't have, we thought they were the best thing back in the 80s. But they just don't have the same texture and flavor and consistency of pan fried bacon. I don't know, do you agree with me? You know, and it was a way of getting rid of the fat, you know, because so you, you didn't want that unhealthy bacon fat. Um, and then now that's coming full circle and we're finding out that actually, you know, saturated fat wasn't the demon that it's been made out to be. So anyway, if you guys like bacon and you want to find a simple way to have each piece turn out perfectly crispy, not burned, and here's the best part, no splatter no splatter. So let me show you how to do it. So right now I'm using uncured uh, hardwood smoked bacon um, from Costco. I'm actually looking to find a local source of pastured pork products. Um, haven't found that yet. So if you are in Southern California, San Diego County preferably, and know that know of a, a producer, then I would love to know that. So the first thing you need is a pot that has higher sides this one, not a pan. So now we're going to cut our bacon. You heard me. We're going to cut the bacon into four equal lengths. So in half and then each of those sections in half. So we're going to turn the heat on to medium and we're going to put the bacon pieces one at a time into the pan. Basically just spreading them out. They're gonna overlap and they're gonna actually sit on top of each other. But once they start cooking, that's not gonna be a problem. You just don't wanna put in a big chunk all together or they won't cook. I know this seems super weird, but just stick with me. So now we're just going to stir it and you want to just keep it stirred every couple minutes to keep it mixed up and cooking evenly. And uh, you don't have to put a lid on this and because of the high sides, it won't splatter. And this is a full pound of bacon in this pot and probably several layers thick piled in there. Once the bacon starts to release all the juice and it gets kind of watery in there, you can turn the heat up a little bit. Now 
All right, we're about 12 minutes in, stirring occasionally, and we're starting to get some browning. When the brown starts to stick to the bottom, you can just take your wooden spoon, scrape it all up. And I've got a plate prepared with some paper towels. It's been 17 minutes. All pretty evenly cooked. I'm not getting a couple of pieces in the middle of the pan that are cooked and the edge ones still aren't. All right, it's been 20 minutes exactly, and we are ready to remove it from the heat. But as you can see, everything is perfectly evenly cooked. There's no burn bits in the uh, fat that's left over. But they're perfectly crispy and hot. Now, after letting the fat cool just a little bit, I just have a two quart Pyrex measuring cup and a strainer with a really fine strain. I don't know what you call that. Pour it in. Beautiful. Full cup out of a pound. You definitely don't get that much out of a pan or the microwave for sure. Now I'm going to let that cool a little bit more and then I'll pour it into a small wide mouth mason jar and put it in the fridge. But right now I'm going to make the eggs. So good. Okay. In the name of efficiency and taste, I'm going to take the rest of the drippings and the dregs of the bacon. Put that in my pan. Turn the heat on medium. Want some eggs, Emily? Yes, please. One or two? Two, please. Are you waiting for some eggs, too? Hmm? All right, once the whites look like they're cooked through, put the lid on for just a minute, not a minute, several seconds until the yellows just start to get a little bit glazed over. Just like that. That was delicious, however. I really should have fed the chickens before I fed myself. Because now it's pouring, of course. All right, it's cleared up a bit, for the time being at least. So I'm gonna rush up here and feed the chickens. Still have to work on the drainage on the path up to the coop. here. I can't wait to get this roof on you guys. Good morning. Some of you look a little wet. Uh oh. So the coop is flooding again. You can see right there against the back wall that there's a pool of water. So all the tarps in the world aren't going to help that. I'm going to have to figure out some kind of drainage here, um, especially when we get the roof on the back. It's just going to all pour right there. Okay. Well, we'll have to figure that out. However, I wanted to show you um, Bill was over here this weekend and he brought a bunch of dirt. Uh, he had access to a bunch of dirt that needed to be moved. Now you might've remembered he had brought some dirt before and kind of spread it out here. I had to take part of the fence down to do what we want to do in this area. So I'm going to let you know a little bit about what that's going to be and give you a view of what he did. This whole big dirt pile was not there before. That's a lot of dirt. That's, I mean, that was 10 dump trucks full. And then he spread it out. And so here's the, the thought is that this berm is going to be brought all the way around in kind of a, a half circle here. 
through where these little sapling eucalyptus are that are going to be taken out and over here to this cold frame. And it's going to be kind of hilly, so it'll look a little bit more natural, not just flat across there. And there'll be trees planted on it to kind of give us a boundary all the way around. There'll be trees planted here so that this whole area is enclosed by trees. And then this is going to be a wildflower meadow with a pond. The first part of our water catchment system right here in the low area that develops after this berm is put in. So I'm really excited about that. Um, it's going to finish off the English countryside look of the entire front yard of our house. So starting over there with the wildflower meadow and pond, moving through the cottage garden, and then over here, uh, the formal English garden, there'll be a long 10 foot wide path down in parallel with the house, and then two huge flower borders on either side of that. So that when I stand here in my driveway, I can just look around and everything is England. I know, I'm crazy. I've never in my life seen this much hail. The entire driveway is white. Mediterranean herb garden doesn't look very Mediterranean. Oh. I'm afraid to look at my tropicals. Ugh. I think they're okay. I think the roof kept pretty much all the hail off. Look at all my seedlings. Fortunately, they're cold hardy. So I don't think this will bother them, but I've never had this experience before. I mean, look at the patio. I'm out here in my robe. It's like a snow day. Like this has never happened before. You guys are all laughing who live in cold climates, I know. But look. Oh, it's starting to rain again. like snow under my feet. <laughs> uh. yes. The entire driveway is white. Love it. So cool. As a California kid who's never even seen a snowfall, like I've been to the snow but I've never seen it snowing, this is like the next best thing but it's starting to rain and it's getting really cold. So I'm, I'm back in the house. Hey guys, so it's the next day and uh, we had quite an eventful night last night. And even this morning, there were uh, bits and pieces of it still around until about 9.30 this morning. Um, so never seen anything like that. So right now, Emily and I are getting ready to leave because the neighbor down below us has, um, the, the last big rains that we had a few weeks ago, they had a complete mess of flooding. And it's because this road up here comes down from a neighbor up there and then down here and then past our house. The thing is, this here has been worn away. There was a curb here. And so what happens is a lot of the water goes right down through my property and pours onto theirs. So he said that the neighbor that used to live here before the last ones actually put sandbags here and it helped a little bit. So Emily and I are headed over to, we wanna help them out and um, hopefully eliminate some flooding because tomorrow we've got some pretty bad rain coming. So we're gonna go with some sandbags. We've tried a couple of times uh, with this past week and we've, it's been a hit or miss. Well, it's been all misses. And then she finally got some sandbags. She went somewhere and got some sandbags, but they were empty. We still have to fill them. Um, the places we went before, they had no sandbags and sand, or they had sandbags but no sand. One or the other. Anyway, so we're gonna go do that.
I think we're gonna have to go get more. So it's Saturday morning, this is the big rain day, and so far, it's living up to that. I figured this was a scarf day, I hardly ever, I never wear one. But since there are blizzards predicted in San Diego County, I figured it's as good a time as any. Now obviously I would be shocked if we got snow here. Maybe some more hail. We have some flooding here on the front porch, but I wanna go up and check the sandbag area and see how that's working out. I can tell it's working because we have a huge river coming down the driveway. So not only are the sandbags working, but I think our drain up there is stopped up again. Fortunately, this is working how it was designed to come into this trough and head out into the pasture and not go into our garage. But I have to get over this river. You guys never get a tour behind the coop, so here you go. And I believe I mentioned this is going to have a roof on it. Some people were worried that it was going to be just the front half for show, but no, it's going to have a roof on it. Yep, so there's a drain right here that is clogged, so it's just overflowing that and going right down into our property. And it's clogged with all the pieces of curb that are coming up. So when we were out here putting down these um, sandbags yesterday, and we only had 10 of them, our neighbor from down below called me and said they had gotten 20 and wanted to know if, if I wanted him to come up and help me set them out. So yeah, so we got those laid out and they are doing their job. A little bit cutting through right there, but probably won't make much of a difference. But now we need to take care of this drain. It's not as easy as you might think to hold a camera, an umbrella, and a shovel. So I gotta choose between you guys and the umbrella, so I'll see you in a second. All right, I give that about 10 minutes before it clogs up again. But it has diminished the river going down the driveway. When we went and got the sandbags filled yesterday, we had to stop by one of my favorite nurseries because it was right there. So let me show you what we got. Just a few things. So I got four blueberry bushes, two uh, more blackberries. I got some delphiniums and some lamb's ears for the cottage garden. And I got two more bare root fruit trees. One is a, an apple to pollinate, one of the ones I got before that didn't have one. And the other one is a crab apple that's I think gonna go up here in the corner on the left side of the cottage to just kind of grow and fill in that area. You get, they get kind of big. Maybe it'll block out that telephone pole back there. And of course, it'll be covered with flowers in the springtime. Now, if you ever wanted to grow blueberries, especially in containers, I'm gonna be doing a video on that. Uh, I think it's next week on the Next Level Gardening channel. Right now, I'm going to check on my two fig trees because before all this rain happened on the super cold, windy day with the 50 mile an hour gusts, I had uh, a special, a few special guests here at the house. If you guys have never heard of the Fig Hunter and you like figs, then I'm gonna leave a link down below to his website. And a few months ago, he sent me uh, some figs in the mail, all labeled so I could test, taste test them and see which ones I liked. And then he sent me some cuttings, which I'm rooting right now. Well, it turns out him and his family were coming down here on a trip and he wanted to stop by and uh, give me some more goodies and kind of just give me some tips on figs because I've never grown them before and I have two trees. While he was here, he actually grafted uh, one variety on this tree here. And he grafted two varieties on this one here. And it was such an interesting time with him because you know, I've never been, I've never grafted anything before. It's always been intimidating to me. I tried one way back like 20 years ago 
didn't work, so I was just intimidated and swore it off and never really, never really needed it because I never had any trees. But he showed me a few different ways to graft, and now I'm kind of intrigued. I want to be able to try it for myself. So he left me some more cuttings for some more trees, and um, I'm going to take you through how that whole process on the Next Level Garden channel. But it was just, it was nice to get to meet him and his wife and his daughters and just learn more about figs. I'll probably have him on a video uh, with us on the Next Level Gardening channel to just kind of, um, maybe even a question and answer thing. We'll see what he thinks of that. But anyway, I'll leave a link to his website and YouTube channel down below. Right now though, I'm going to go inside, get warm and dry, and just enjoy some downtime. Hope you guys are having a great weekend. I'll see you next time.